G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. This episode we get stuck into our handrails for the stairs down into the freezer room. Doink doink, nice sturdy handrails there. And we also start continuous welding our sliders for the stabilizers on the side of the boat. Right, we are gonna solid weld these. So what I need to do is, you can sort of see there's two bits of six mil steel mated together. I need to get in there with the nine inch grinder and V that out. So I'm gonna cut right the way along. I'll do a couple of tacks on the other side so it doesn't fall apart. But I'm gonna cut right the way along and V that right down, probably halfway through, so go down three mil and then we'll run a blast to weld right the way along. Now that will open it up. So if you have a look on this end, you can sort of see it's very, very slightly um, bowing inwards. And by welding the back first, that's gonna allow that to bow out and get it straight. And then we'll um, V the opposite side, do the weld on the opposite side. So it'll be fully welded on both sides, continuous weld. And um, yeah, then we'll be good to go in terms of that'll be strong enough. Uh, we'll be able to blast it at that stage and it'll be a pretty solid piece of steel that'll never come open. Now, the reason why we're solid welding it rather than stitch welding it is you can sort of see if you look down along the length of that, you're always gonna have a seam. If you don't solid weld, you're always gonna have a seam. And according to Tony, the sandblaster here, you're always going to get rust. At some point, it's going to, the paint will break down, you're gonna get water in there, seawater in there, and it's going to rust. So by solid continuous welding, we're gonna resolve that. It's gonna be the same challenge that we had to face and solve with the, um, the three beams on the arm. Exactly the same situation. You look prepared for something. I am. It's yeah. hard to tell what. <laughs> Okay. I've gone through and V'd it out, so I used the 9 inch grinder with a cut off disc, a 2mm cut off disc, and belt down a slot, and then I put it on a slight angle and drag it back, and that gets a, a, a really kind of wide shallow V, easy to fill up and lovely to weld. This is what you're ending up with, a pretty nice bead right the way along. So we're not going to clean it up any more than that, we'll just leave that as is. But we'll do that on both sides and that'll be more than strong enough for what we need these to do. This is what we're finished with. So it's kind of pretty nice. Some of them are pretty big. Just give them a bit of a flapper wheel down just to make sure that they're lovely. But all the way along, that's a nice solid weld. You can kind of see, dig right in, you can sort of see the quality of the weld. That's gonna be perfectly fine for what we're doing. And we'll spin it over and we'll do the same on the other side. But the thing that we have to manage, if you look down the length of that, you can see there's a bow in that. Sort of easy to see it that way around. When we weld it on the other side, we have to make sure that we put enough heat into the middle to actually get that straight again. So, something to manage. Wow, you can see the bow like that. Yeah, it's strong, eh? If you look along the length of this, 
you can see the bow that we talked about sort of earlier going basically above the saw horses you can sort of see the level there but what's happened if I come right down this end here the distance between the top is different from the distance at the bottom here so um, it should be 41 mil at the top we have 37 ish and at the bottom it's probably going to be yeah, 41 mil so what I need to do is jack that out get it back close to the 41 and then weld it if I weld it now it's going to close up more and then if I jack it out once I've welded it the, the welds are more likely to crack if I do it that way around so I've got to get the distance to be 41 millimeters that's that's my magic number at the moment they're doing that and it's 37 millimeters at the top here so if I weld it as it is it'll pull in more it'll go I don't know say 34 millimeters for argument's sake and then if I jack it back out because I've got so much steel on those welds I'm more likely to crack it at that point because I would have put heat in and a whole bunch of other stuff so what I'm better off to do is jack it out now where there's not it's not fully welded jack it out now and go slightly over the 41 and then when I weld it'll pull it back into the 41 you want to do it soon because you want some heat in there I want it you? right now yeah, yeah. where's your uh, measury thing oh, Is it even all the way along? Like, it's 37 there. Yeah. 40. Oh, okay, it's just at the end. 40. 41. 41. 39. We're right. It's actually only a it bit. It ends open, eh? It's, it's okay? It, it does a wobble, it's not even. So it's just the same? Yeah, like you can see it there, it tapers in. Like you got 38 and a half, 39 and a half. I don't know if this will work. Okay, so we've got 39, 39, 40. So it's working? It's working. Just move the, move the. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you. Right. 39ish. 39 and a half. 39. 40. Okay. So okay, 41. 40. So, 40. 40, 40, 30, it's starting to go into 39s, 39 and a half, 39, it's down to 39. Thirty-nine. 
40. I don't think I'm moving it. Really? Do you need to get a bigger wedge? Corners of the wedge, as we've whacked it previously on the top, it's flared out on the top. It's gone sort of plumbed out. Um, bit hard to see, but I'm thinking if I just shave those two little corners off there, I'll be able to actually get this right down in and really get some grunt on, because I can only get to about here before it starts to bind up. I wonder if you need yeah. to put blocks in so it can't bend. Yeah, I Metal am blocks in or something. I am thinking that. Yeah, this is a longer job than we thought, eh? Well, actually what I'm thinking, I wonder if I, if I make some 41 millimeter spaces, mm. maybe 42 millimeter. 42 is better than 40. Slightly loose. Just in case anyone is um, observant, you see Dame's little magical sleeve there? <laughs> Dame got burnt, so he, um, to get the bandage to hold, um, we had to. Uh, well, we shaved shave. me. Show your burn. Quick job before I get stuck into my daily work um, is I want to put a set of handrails on the stairs that lead down into the freezer room. So what I've done is I've got some uh, 1.6mm wall thickness, 32mm diameter pipe, stainless pipe, um, and I've got it bent the way that I need it and things like that, and I've got these things. Ugh. Whole bunch of uh, 90 degree elbows. So what I want to do is basically start tacking it all together the way that it needs to go. Um, and then I'll take them out of the boat and I'll do a nice weld around them outside of the boat where I can control it a bit better um, But by doing it this way it means that I can get exactly the shape that I'm after Stick it in here and we've got a decent set of handrails leading all the way down into that room downstairs trick I use when I'm doing pipe, so whether it's plumbing or stainless or whatever, put it where you want it, draw a couple of lines so that you can get it exactly rotationally lined up, and then I always mark it like A, A, and that way I know when everything's in pieces, I can always make sure I get the right bit welded to the right pipe. Actually the reason why I didn't get this whole thing bent up as one is there's no way I was going to get radiuses that tight on a bender. Um, these are also mandrel, so they don't, what that means is on the inside of the bend it doesn't crush down. So if it's a non-mandrel bender, so a lot of uh, cheap exhaust pipe, that sort of thing, is, is bent. I don't know what the machine is called or whatever, but when it, when it basically um, bends it, it crushes the inside in to relieve some of the tension as it's pulling it around. Mandrel is different, they fill it with a, either sand or a few, there's a few different ways of doing it, but when they basically bend it, it forms the tube and there's no deflection whatsoever of size. So if you're doing a performance exhaust, mandrel bend's what you want because then you don't get any restriction in the pipe going forward. But for me, I want a mandrel bend so that it looked pretty and um, yeah, it didn't feel weird when you're running your hands over them. Normally I'd say weld this stuff on a bench so that you can get it nice and flat. I didn't have a flat bench. So if I tried that, it wouldn't be nice or flat. So I'm freestyling it. But she'll be right. So standard procedure for Brewpeg. The blueprints for this design are in here. Nothing is drawn on CAD. I know that's gonna make some of you have an absolute coronary, but we will survive.
right down at the bottom, I've got to do this weird little dog leg, and that's why I ended up cutting it short like that, because I want to take up the least amount of room possible. If I left them long, they would be, well, that would be out like that somewhere, going back in, so I'd lose maybe six inches. Doing it this way, I'd probably lose four inches, so um, yeah, I'll do that on both of them, make a real ni nice tight radius around there. That dog leg's right down the very bottom of the stairs, so um, looking at it from this angle, you've got the, the top will be probably a good metre, 1.3, 1.5 metres basically above the floor, so a really high handrail, so there's plenty of area to grab onto depending on how tall you are. Um, and then it goes almost all the way down to the floor, um, and this little dog leg is right down at the floor and it welds onto the steel staircase. Um, so it's a really solid, firm um, you know, position all the way through. It's, it's not real thick steel, um, it's only 1.6 mil wall thickness, which is definitely thick enough for a handrail. Um, most of the stuff I build on the boat would be a minimum of 3 mil wall thickness for pipe and things like that. I did think about doing 3 mil just to make them super, super solid, um, but I couldn't get any polished stainless in 3 mil easily, so I just thought, ah, let's just go with what everyone else uses and do 1.6. Um, it's not going to hurt, it'll be perfectly fine, so that's the plan. A bit of a check, see if that worked. Call that a win. I fucking hate TIG welding. I love it, but I hate it. Right. One of them done. All right, they've been scuffed over. So my plan here is not to get the walls smooth and shiny. So for any car painters out there, this is not the surface that you want to be looking at for perfection. Basically what I want to do is like you can sort of see here, there's lots of little dark spots. That's where the white has gone through into the resin underneath. Um, I just want to knock out any sort of lumps and bumps so that when I put a coat on this, it's not going to have big obvious runs and things like that. The last lot wasn't too bad. It hid quite a lot, um, but I just want to get a little bit smoother. So I'll put three coats over the whole lot and we should be good to go. Start putting the bed in here tomorrow. So first thing in the morning, we're back down the bottom, gonna get these handrails sorted. So the important thing when TIG welding is always leave the audience wanting more. So with that in mind, I'm not gonna show you some of my early TIG welds, cause Jesus, they're horrific. Uh, it's probably the most gentle way to describe it. <laughs> so what I did was, it's all welded, it's all good. There's no holes in it any, anymore. Um, I filled all of the, shall we say divots. Uh, I filled them up and I'm now gonna go through and polish them all off so that you'll never even know where it was welded. This is what it comes up like with a bit of a decent polish. So that there is just 60 grit. I'll see if I can get closer and show you the marks. So there's still a few marks to get off the surface. So I go from 60 grit to 120, and that helps me take down some of those marks. But then I work my way through into polishing. So calico wheels on the drill, basically. I'd like to have it on the grinder, but I don't have a grinding attachment. So it'll be calico wheels on the drill, high speed, and we'll use a rubbing compound to essentially take that down to as close a mirror finish as we can or it'll basically copy whatever's on the rest of the pole so um, by the time we're finished it's going to look like one piece of steel right the way through.
So this is after 120 grit. There you go, you can sort of see the mark. See if I can zoom in. So we had 60, now we're down to 120. Next step is go through with a calico wheel on the on the uh, drill, see if we can get that smoother again. So as you saw before, that is 120 grit. So we've gone from 60 to 120, straight over to the same basically piece of steel that's been polished. That's with the first round of polishing. I actually don't think I'm gonna go much further than that because it's come down to pretty much what this, this um, polish finish is on the pipe as it is. So I think we're happy with that and we'll just roll. Um, remember this boat doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be super functional. And absolutely that fits the, that plan. This is where the handrails need to go. And you can sort of see, if you look down there, come on this angle here, you can see the stairs and the wall have a bit of a, a kink going on. And then if I zoom right in, you can see I've created the same bend in the bar itself. So what we need to do is line the bars up, I'll zoom back, line the bars up so that they mount onto the wall and then go all the way down the stairs. And you can see right down the bottom, we've got that little twist on the bars and that links back up. To the stairs themselves onto the side beams so we'll get that mounted and you'll see what i'm thinking when i uh, came up with the design i can't use the grinder in here to just flap that off it'll take me two seconds with a flapper just to buzz a clear bit of steel but because it's the inside of the boat i don't want to put crap everywhere so whenever i'm ripping off paint like this i've got to go through quite a few layers because this was the original rear wall of the wheelhouse when it was a fishing boat so there's about i don't know five or six layers of paint on this already so I use a file, scratch down as much as I can into steel, and then I just get a 40 grit or a 60 grit disc and just give it a scuff up um, by hand. And it's everything that comes off is then just vacuumable. Um, doesn't really leave a lot of crap through the boat. So my plan is to get that up like, like so. I'll put the handrail into there and I'll tack it in. Line it up down the bottom, tack the bottom in as well. And it'll sit like that. And then I'll use that to measure across and be parallel on this side. So get one in, I'll start putting the other one in. Right, I'm just going to tap the bottom. Oh, can you put the amps down to 80? Yep. Okay. Wow, that looks gorgeous. Tacked. What a lovely design, darling. Yeah, it's going to work quite well, eh? Yeah, I think it's neat. I like you've got that little curve ah. at the bottom because when you're going around the corner, you just grab it as the boat's moving. And yeah. It's like a little handhold. So now I can get this one parallel. Now that I've got that one in, I can do some measuries. I wanted them quite high so that you can grab them like quite high up when you're Yeah, down. yeah, tall people as yeah. well, eh? Yeah. And you can just slide down them basically. Lovely. Yeah. I wonder if we actually. I'd say we can. They're pretty smooth, aren't they? Give it a shot. Isn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna um, MIG weld them in and then clean it up with a TIG weld because I don't have any 309 wire and I trust my ability to get a solid MIG weld on this. Mm. I don't trust my ability to get a solid TIG weld. Yeah, until you're confident. Yeah. It's too important. Safety's always yeah. got to be the priority. Okay, cool. You wanna do that now? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is Sven anyway? <laughs> I haven't seen him for a while. <laughs> Sven's been conspicuously absent. Up to no good. I'm just trying to figure out what's parallel. So um, I'll get a, a width measurement. 
because the whip is kind of set by the bottom here. Are you on your mark? I am, yeah. Okay. 420. So I just need to make the top 420 and it's parallel. I just realised something. What? That's level with the deck. It's not level, it's I like that. We came to a blinding realisation that this line was parallel to the deck, the deck's not straight, it curves off over here so the handrails would have been skewer. So we have to raise it about, I don't know, inch and a half, something like that. One of the challenges when you're doing boat interiors is do you make something straight and perfectly level or do you have it line up with the rest of the interior of the boat? It all comes down to looks. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you take the top of these handrails for example, you can see that line that goes across the wall there, that's parallel with the deck which is just down there. So we basically just measured up from the bottom on both sides and we've got ourselves a line. However, if you come right back, when you look at that line, it's a bit hard to see in the camera, but it slopes off to the left, it's lower on the left and that's basically following the, the line of the deck, so the deck has a curve in it. So if we welded them in according to that line, they'd always look a bit skew if. So, we've raised it slightly on this side, so the top here is level with the top here. So when you look at it, it's going to look perfect. And that's some of the challenges that you have to figure out when you're doing boat interior, is what's more important, that it looks right or that it measures right. In this case, it's going to look right. Down more? Yeah, a couple of mil. Yeah, that's it, perfect. Okay. Okay. Cool. You want me to hold? Yeah. Holding? Yep. We might want to move the stuff next door. Yeah, I'll just go and do the move that and then I'll do the bottom and then that's tacked. Nice bend. Yeah, they're cool, eh? They look great with the gates and everything. Yeah, they will, they look really awesome. Where are you off to? I'm just going to tack the bottom. Oh, that's right, you're doing the other side. It won't tack itself. I need to learn to tag, don't I? Oh. One of us needs to be able to do it. <laughs> Someone needs to learn how to do tag without swearing. <laughs> so they're in tentatively. I'm going to need to beef the middle up, aren't I? Don't try and slide down them right now. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking I need to put something yeah. a bit flimsy. They're strong enough, but they're, they're flimsy. So soft. sliding down them is not going to be possible if you put a brace in, because your hand will stuck in it. You could, you could be a grown up though and slide down like that. I'm sure we'll figure a way. You might get your feet caught here as you slide. Maybe we have to make foot scallops. <laughs> Maybe no one slides. Maybe they're just handrails. Well, I don't think we should give up so easily. <laughs> on the important thing? No. There are some things on this boat that sort of sim are symbolic to me of progress, and this is one of them. <laughs> I remember Richard and you making these stairs and, and, yeah. and sort of dreaming about some handrails, you know, that are really really good handrails. I remember when we first started all this we had the stepladder of death. That that's was right. The <laughs> rickety ass aluminium stepladder <laughs> that was right. cut on an angle to fit the ribs <laughs> and and you go down with you know thoughts and prayers as you're climbing down. <laughs> that's right. I remember that. Yeah that was awesome. Yeah. The stairs were quite an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah it's kind of um, momentous really. It's small but it seems small but it's it symbolizes a lot. They're at the stage of accommodations are downstairs and Yeah. Yeah. We'll start working on the bed for uh for crew number one. Yeah. Name has not been revealed yet. <laughs> <laughs>
We can tell you. She's a she. Ooh, oh, the intrigue, the <laughs> drama. Who will it be? <laughs> All right. Let's go and do something productive. Okay. All right, boys. You got the camera on? He's a sweet, got his eyes shut. Yeah. Yep, that good. worked. They're quite solid now. Very good. Done? Yep, done. Alright. Yeah, it's soft. Let's build a wall. Alright, give us that. Now that the preliminary job's done. Mm. Well they're quite solid now. I'll clean them up with a TIG when I've got a minute. Let me. An important trick when you're painting lines and you want really good quality lines is while the paint's still wet, pull the tape off, that way you get a perfectly beautiful line. If you leave it till it's dry, you can end up cracking the paint off and you don't get that beautiful line. So I'll go through in the next day, put a couple of coats more on that. The stuff we're using is Jodacote, it's a Jodan product, Jodacote 605. The reason we're using that, it's a really um, thick, high build uh, layer that you put on first as your base metal paint um, and it's really good for decks and high abrasion areas in this case stairs are going to get a bit of a hiding particularly on the edges so we'll put that on and then we're going to put our grip tape and so on on top of that so of course one of the most important things on brew peg is safety we've got people coming from around the world with all levels of ability and disability coming on board um, we want people to be as safe as possible so um, I'm going to put a little bracket in here on each side um, can you see that bracket here on each side um, to get it to give it some more strength, but also we're going to use this stuff. Um, let me see if I can get it to show on camera. Yeah, there it is. Um, so it's non-slip stuff that we can stick down with really, really good glue. Of course, the paint will be a different colour. This is undercoat, the white, um, but that grey of the non-slip pad will be like be like it looks on camera. And we'll do one on each step. And uh, thanks to Madison. Um, one of our patrons, she suggested uh, lighting the stairs um, for more safety. Fantastic idea, and Damien's taking it a step further, of course. Uh, he's thinking of putting LEDs under each step, so that each step is lit, but you don't have a light in your eyes as you're going down or up. So, fantastic. And of course, a big thank you to Richard and Michelle. Thanks, Richard, for helping build these stairs and all your support, guys.